Hey up my dots, it's Simon here. How are we doing? I just saw a comment that made me smile. Hey up our kid <laughs> from Joanne. Hello Joanne, hope you're okay. So have we all got a cuppa? Let's do a um let's do a, a roll call, see who we've got here already. So Kim was the first one in. Hello Kim, lovely to see you. And then Caroline, nice to see you. And we have Sarah and David um Anne hello Anne made it in time today Evelyn a up um Elizabeth Kate Gypsy Heart we've got Tycon hello Tycon and Gypsy Heart is Govinda so hello Govinda nice to have you here uh we have D and Intuitive Renee Angela Metaphysic Mike, hello. Celia, Michelle. Corbin, hello Corbin, how are you doing? Ellie and Leslie. We have Melissa, hello Melissa, and Jen Jen. So stay tuned because our lovely Jen Jen from Jen's Balance Tarot will be joining me for the last 10 minutes or so of Cup of Ketchup and Cards today to give us all an update on Tarathon, which um, I'm sure you've seen some of the promo materials that have already gone out, but it's really exciting. And we're in May now. May is the month of Tarathon, so I'm really excited. So Jen will be joining us a little bit later towards the end, so she can give us a full kind of um, rundown and run through of everything. So we also have Selkie, kisses for you all. Kisses right back at you, Selkie. And Richard and Brittany and Patrice. Hello, Patrice. <laughs> Elle singing Greece, stranded at the driving. I'm not going to sing because I can't. I'm a growler. Our Naomi is here. Hello, Naomi. Lovely to see you. And Kat. Hey, up, Kat. Long time no see. Always lovely when you pop in. Lovely to see you. So, hello. Isn't it wet, cold? Back into the jumpers in Nottingham today, Kat. I did go out in it early and I got soaked. Um, Jeff's here. Hello, Jeff and Elizabeth. And who else we got? Scott's here. Hello, Scott. Nice new profile picture. Maddie Maharet. Hello, Maharet. And Raven Song. Hello, Raven Song. Um, Carol, Olga, Misty, and Caveman. Hello, Caveman. So, welcome everybody to Cup of Catch Up and Cards. How are we all doing? Have we got a brew? I've just got a regular, regular decaf coffee today uh, with almond milk because it's just a cold, cold day. I, I actually was wearing a t shirt earlier, I wore fleece to go out in. And as I said, got really soaked. So come back and I've had to put heating on, jumper on. They always say never cast a clout till May is out, whoever they are, but they do say it. Kat says, my coat still isn't dry from 9 a.m. Cozy, rainy afternoon though. Yeah, you have to you have to make the best of it, don't you? It's nice to, you know, light some candles, some incense kind of shut the world out, close all your windows, put the heating on, put a nice thick jumper on, and what better to chat with friends or stick something on Netflix or what have you. Working on that coffee now, says Jen. Of course, it's still really early where you are. It's like 8 a.m., isn't it? So good morning. It's cool and rainy here today too. Seems like the day for it. And isn't it weird, Jen, because Jen's in <laughs> Seattle, um, and... You seem to have a very similar, I think my mic's okay because I just realised it's quite, quite a way off. Let me move it into better position. Um, the weather always seems to be very similar. It seems to mirror that of the UK, I find, because often when we're having hot days, you're having hot days and rainy days are the same. Rain and chilly earlier here in Jefferson, but the sun is out now. That's nice. Go away and give us some sunshine, says Maddie. 
it's cold in Canada too. I don't think spring wants to come. Spring hasn't sprung. Good morning. Hi, Simon. First cup I've made for a while. Well, it's lovely to have you, Amanda. Really lovely to have you. And Lady Pentacles hasn't had any coffee yet either. Oh, you all need to go and put that kettle on. Yeah, it makes it easy to acclimatate. <laughs> yes, when you visit. Yeah. Olga says, tomorrow is going to be 26 degrees Celsius here. Wow, that would be nice. And where are you again, Olga? After yesterday's glorious weather, I'm despairing of today. Awful. Where is spring? We really do feel like we've gone back a couple of months, don't we? The weather in Virginia is very similar to the UK. That's good to know. Lovely and warm here in Western North Carolina. Hey, Rob, how are you? It's lovely to see you. A cold Red Bull. We have a cloud-free sky with warm sun. Wow, you're brave having that Red Bull. The Pacific Northwest, Western Oregon, Washington has very similar weather to the Southern UK. Back in World War II, UK rose societies sent lots of roses to Portland or to grow. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. The Netherlands. Olga's in the Netherlands. I remember now. Uh, in case the Nazis destroyed the UK. Yeah, the roses in the UK. Don't forget, biscuits have to be drunk. Hobnobs are best, Leslie. Hobnobs are best. Oh, and it's harder to get them, but I like the plain chocolate, which is dark chocolate. Dark chocolate hobnobs. None of that milk chocolate stuff. Um, But every time I go into my local supermarket, they only have the milk chocolate ones, but I try not to have many hobnobs now, anyway. That's how Portland, or Oregon, came to be known as the City of Roses. Wow. You're full of interesting information, Melissa. Uh, Rob's fine, just got home from work. Well, he can relax now. We've got the rest of the weekend off, Rob. Hello, Stephanie. Lovely to see you. Very chilly, very chilly trip. That was not easy to say. Very chilly trip to get some strawberry plants today. Oh, and... They are hardcore of Dunkers. Never seen seen the dark ones. Yeah, they're in a red packet. You know, the blue packet is the milk chocolate. Red packet for the dark chocolate. Hello, Kay. I'm happy to see you here too. Elders just comes in. Love a good hobnob. <laughs> to be honest, I really like cold weather. I feel so much better. Ah, oh, so glad to see everybody and that everybody's doing well, despite whatever kind of weather conditions you're all experiencing. Hi, Mullamere. Nice to see you. I like a ginger biscuit. Yeah, I haven't had a ginger biscuit for years. It's not ones that I would reach for first on the shelf. But, you know, if you when we were kids, we had biscuit barrels, didn't you? Do you remember biscuit barrels? And you had such an assortment because your parents would buy like, I don't know, five or six different packets of biscuits and just mix them all into, em empty them all into this biscuit barrel and you'd have a rummage around. Well, for some reason, the Bourbons went first in, in our family. So if you got a Bourbon, me having to fight them off with my sisters, you were lucky. But I always ended up with the ginger nuts. And I suppose that's not very PC now, but that's what they were called back then, ginger nut. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I got to quite like them, but I didn't let on that I liked them because if I told my sisters, well, I'm all right with the ginger nuts, they would have took the ginger nuts. So I just kept quiet. I was like, oh, ginger nuts again. But I like the nice to dunk. Ginger nuts really have to be dunk in, in tea or coffee. I have to say that custard creams are my favorite. Oh, nice custard cream. Yeah. Gosh, now I need something with lots of sugar in it. Hot chocolate. Oh, yes, Olga. Full of custard creams, chocolate digesters, malted milk. And do you remember the ones, I suppose this is just UK folk, I think they were called malted milks, that had a picture of the cows on them. So there's like a square biscuit with a frame. It was like a photo frame. And then in the middle was a couple of cows. Were they malted milks? I think they were. Good for dunking. 
My mother still got a biscuit barrel and she still uses it today. So can mine has. My parents have still got their biscuit barrel. And we're not talking of cookie jars, which became popular like the late 90s. Biscuit barrels, proper malted milks. Oh, you're, you surely, are they still about? I was like, you're far too young to remember malted milks, but they must still be doing them. Yes, 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 and milk aids. Milk, milk maids. Yes, milk maids. Gosh, and I used to love the ones that were biscuit on one bit, and then you had icing with three colours. You know, like Neapolitan ice cream, chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. I think this was banana, though. And they had icing on one side with three stripes. <laughs> Why are we talking about biscuits? <laughs> Well, that's what Cup of Ketchup and Cards is all about, isn't it? We just chat about whatever comes up. I have got some a few things to show you because I went on a bit of a bank holiday mini spending spree. I don't care about sweets, but now I want some. <laughs> it's FOMO. FOMO around biscuits. Um, I love a dark chocolate ginger. A spicy biscuit with thick dark chocolate. Oh, that sounds heavenly, David. Not seen them. I do like chocolate covered gingers, you know, like the crystallized gingers. We've got a shop over here called Holland and Barrett, and they sell a bag of them chocolate covered gingers. And that's dark chocolate covered around crystallized ginger. Oh, so nice. Hi, Kristen. Nice to see you. Um, it was fun to watch you on Richard's channel last night. That was really nice. You're making me hungry. Sorry, Brittany. <laughs> oh, yes, I know which ones you mean. Gosh, I haven't had those for ages. A bank holiday bender. Yeah, we see pubs are still shut, aren't they? They're open outdoors, but who's going to sit outside a pub in, in this weather? So it was, it was really nice, though, just to have a bank holiday. I mean, it was like this. The bank holiday in the UK was quite traditional. <laughs> It was cold, it was windy, it was wet. Um, but I didn't want to just spend the day sitting um, in front of the TV. So I thought, I'm going to do something productive. So that's when I did the um, modification. I don't know if people have seen it yet on my channel. Um, but I modified the Crystal Visions, Crystal Visions um, deck and did a, a walkthrough of that. And then after I finished that, before, you know, once you've started, um, for those of you who do create content, when you finish filming, especially when you filmed it in lots of segments like I had for all the different things, and I knew I needed to speed it, speed bits up, I needed to chop it, I needed to add music, I needed to, I just thought, well, it's just taken like an hour and a half, two hours to, to record this. So I'm going to go and have a walk, I'm going to have a walk around town. And as soon as I got out there, even though the weather was awful, there was a real buzz. And I think it's because we're coming out, you know, gradually out of, oh, it's a Deviant Moon email. I should check that out after. Um, even though there's a gradual lifting of restrictions, the shops are all back open again, which I don't really get because, you know, if you go and have a meal or go and have a drink or go to a coffee shop, they can monitor um, or manage, I should say, social distancing much better than 300 people rammed inside Primark. So it doesn't make sense that non-essential shops are back open, but hospitality and catering, which always seems to be the hardest hit. Um, party rings, yes, that's what it was called. Um, aren't. But that aside, that's a whole different thing. It was lovely just to walk around the city again and hear musicians playing and a hustle and a bustle returning to the city. It just felt really nice. And then I thought, I'm going to go to my favourite shop, which is in the city, which was Ice Nine. It was closed. So I was a little bit sort of, hmm. I went into Void and then I thought, I'll have a walk around Waterstones. And I picked up three books and three decks, but they're not all tarot decks, but I'll show you them in a second. I just thought I saw a comment 
Um, hi, June. Nice to see you. How are you, June? June's had a spell in hospital, so I'm hoping that you're okay now. Are you home and comfortable and on the mend? Um, Lint makes dark chocolate fused with red hot pepper. Yes, they do. In those those thin slab bars. They're quite nice, caveman. Love dark chocolate and chilli. You guys are still talking about chocolate and biscuits and... <laughs> um, do you all have a mask mandate in the UK? Yes. We, we have to wear masks in public indoor places. It, we heard on the news this week that they're thinking of scrapping um, social distance at the end of next month, at the end of June. We'll see. I suppose as long as the figures still continue to uh, to go down and the vaccination rates continue to go up, then um, I can't see why we can't start lifting some more restrictions. Simon, painkillers are good. So you're home, are you, are you June? I'm glad that uh, painkillers are helping. Um, Leslie says, used to live in Nottingham City, loved it, stepping outside into the buzz of the city. Yeah, I that's one of the things I like, especially the music of the city. There's lots of, you only have to walk down certain streets and there's lots of musicians and, um, you know, singers and all sorts. It's really nice. It's a really nice vibe. Um, everybody's sending lots of love and healing to our June. Um, fellow Canadian. I've been home since Monday. They gave me plenty of painkillers, thank goodness. I'm glad, June. There's nothing, nothing nicer than being in your own home, is there? So I'm glad you're home and hopefully on the mend. Okay, so, shall we have a look at what I've got? So, this is my little mini haul of, of things that I, I picked up. Um, and I didn't really go in with the intention of, <laughs> as many of us do, I didn't really go in with the intention of buying anything. Um, I just thought, oh, just go and have a look, see, see what they've got in. And I always go to the second floor. There's four, four floors. Oh, it's the five, four or five floors anyway. And on the second floor, which is the third level, is where they have the spirituality section, as they call it. Yes, Shell was pleased. We rarely do. We rarely do. Oh, intend to spend money when we go to shops, yeah. So the first thing I got, and even though I've got this in many kind of forms, um, I saw this online a couple of months ago, but it is the original key to the tarot, the Rider Weight key to the tarot. And this is the 2020 version. And it's got a forward by Liz Green. But I love it because it's got the Rose and Liz design um, and it's hardback. It's a hardback book. Um, and it wasn't expensive, it's $8.99. Um, and it says the official companion to the world famous original Rider Waite tarot deck. The key to the tarot is the essential guide to unlocking the secrets of tarot from renowned scholar of the occult, A.E. Waite. This enlightening book, um, which can be used in conjunction with any set of tarot cards, explains the history and symbolism of the tarot deck, as well as providing a step by step guide to using the cards for divination practices. This is your key to harnessing the power of the tarot. And it's by Ryder. It's been released by Ryder. I have that edition. It's nice, it's Corbin. Um, I've got the pictorial key to the tarot, which came with the um, Centennial set um, from US Games. But yeah, so this has got part one, a veil, and the veil and its symbols. Uh, class one, the Trump's major or greater arcana. Class two, the four suits or lesser arcana. And then part two is the doctrine behind the veil. The Trump's majors again, so it goes into more details. And then part three, the outer method of the oracles, the lesser arcana or the four suits, the greater arcana and their divinatory meanings. 
and then some additional meanings of the lesser arcana um so yeah there's quite there's quite a lot in here um how many pages is it i think it's about 150 from memory 156 156 pages so i picked that up and i thought it was quite reasonable quite nicely presented and reasonable for nine pounds so sounds awesome i teach so i really have gotten it long before then uh what was that oh your vaccine yeah i'm double dosed now so i'm set till august uh, till august till autumn where we're going to have the kind of um booster program in place hopefully by then so yeah i had my second jab two weeks ago I know this book is a must-have, but I've always found it hard to understand. Yeah, well, I thought that, you know, but then when I was in the shop looking through it and I was reading um, some of the interpretations, so it would give you the numbers, like seven is chariot. Um, this is represented by the exact codices of being drawn by two sphinxes. And the device accords with the symbolism, but it must not be supposed that it was with its original form. The variation was invented to support a particular historical hypothesis. So it doesn't give you much there. But then when you go to the back and look at them again, as in, there's about three sections with three different descriptions of the cards. The greater uh, arcana and their divinatory meanings. And you go to seven, it says the chariot. Sucker, providence, also war, triumph, presumption, vengeance, trouble. So then it gives you keywords. And what did you get for the second section? Let me see if I can uh, find that. Yeah, so this section then is the Trump's major. And this is where it kind of explains it. Very easy to read, understandable. Uh, language it says the chariot an erect and princely figure carries a drawn sword and corresponds broadly speaking to the traditional description which i've given in part one so it references back and then they put see page 12 on the shoulders of the victorious hero are supposed are supposed to be the urine and thumbing he has led captivity captive he is conquest on all planes, in the mind, in science, in progress, and in all trials of initiation. He has thus replied to the Sphinx, and it is for this reason that I have accepted the variation um, of Eliphas Levi. Two sphinx Sphinxes thus draw his chariot. He is above all things triumph in the mind. So... There's lots of different sections that you can read about um, that one card. And I thought from the little books that I've had, you know, sometimes um, publishers will put in a little little white book that will say key to the tarot. It just gives you those kind of keywords. Hi, Regina. Oh, Brittany's just ordered the everyday witch tarot. Hi, Jackie. Nice to see you. Caroline says, Simon, Eternal Seeker Oracle I ordered. I really like your review. I think this Oracle deck is a wonderful deck twist on the major only deck and has a lot to possibilities when I read for others. Yeah, so what Caroline is talking about um, is this deck, which is the Eternal Seeker Oracle. It's not out in the UK until um, end of June, but it's by Pamela Steele. And it's um, an oracle deck based on the major arcana of the tarot. So, um, yeah, and I put a review of this up yesterday. It's by uh, Red Feather. So, so, another book that I got. Now, one of my favorite books of 2020 of last year is, I always get the wrong, the wrong way around, but The Boy, The Mole, The horse and the fox <laughs> it's a variation of that i'm not going to go into the hall and, and um, grab it but i love it i think it's a beautiful book and 
when I went in, they had the wall display with that book there. And next to it was this. I don't know if anybody has seen it yet, but it's in a similar vein. And it's called Together. It's by Luke Adam Hawker. And I haven't read it yet. Um, can you remind me where you bought these? I bought these from Waterstone, Stephanie, the bookshop. Um, but it talks about how when the dark clouds come, you can get through things uh, together, you know, how people can band together to help others get through things. So I'll just read the back and it says, dark clouds were looming in the distance. We watched them gather and we wondered, when will it come? How long will it last? A momentum, a momentum, <laughs> here I go. A monumental storm brings huge and sudden change. We follow a man and his dog through the uncertainty that it brings to their lives. Through their eyes, we see the difficulties of being apart, the roller coaster of emotions that we can all relate to, and the realization that by pulling together, we can move through difficult times with new perspective, hope, and appreciation of what matters most in life. And isn't that true? And it's it's gorgeous, and just like um, the boy, the mole, the horse, and the fox. This has lovely little illustrations. It's not heavy on words, but it is something that you can read and then just dip into. So I've just opened it here, and it says, "Fear can be a funny thing. It doesn't always shine a flattering light. It can make us forget that others are scared too." So yeah, I'm really, I love, I love these little books that um, come out because they remind me of you know children's stories for adults, and I love children's stories, which is actually it brings me on to, hey Chris, you did make it, lovely to see you. I hope everything's okay, and that you're you're doing all right. So I don't know if anybody else has got this book. Um, it is $16.99, so, but it's hardback. Um, and I just adore them. I adore these kind of books because, you know, they, they're so powerful. They have a, a very strong message, but they're so easy to read. But, you know, when you read those words and you think, wow, they really, they really touch you. It's just gorgeous. Look at the illustrations. I really want it now. Yeah. We took shelter, knowing the worst was yet to come. Weeks went by. It rained and it rained. It felt like it would never end. And that's like what we just, what all of us have been through as well, isn't it? We have like the pandemic where we had to take shelter. We had to go indoors and the weeks rolled by, you know, how many 90 something quarantine streams we did where we were together helping each other through it. And that's what this is about, this book together. How, you know, no man is an island. We all, we all need people from time to time to get us through difficult patches. So so that was another book that I got. If you do want to catch my attention, guys, then do tag me with the Hermit's Cave or Popping Capitals um, like Caroline did, and then I'll be able to see um, if there's anything. Like Stephanie's put, I have that book. Do you like it, Stephanie? Um, yeah. And then the third book, the third and final book, talking of the importance of children's stories, is this is by Catherine Rundell, and it's called Why You Should Read Children's Books Even Though You Are So Old and Wise. <laughs> Just that as a title, I was like, and it was at the till. You know, you, you go to pay things, and I was like, right, I'm not going to buy anything else. I've got everything I need. And I got to the till, and I gave my Waterstones card, and he, that's for your points. And then he says, um, anything along here that interests you today? And I was like, no. <laughs> and this was a little book. Um, because I, I believe, 
you know, some of my favorite books are children's books. And what's the, um, the Lunar Moon Hair is for, it's a children's book, but it's, there's a child in all of us, isn't there? You know, we are the older version of our childhood selves. You know, with that's that person hasn't gone. We're still that 10 year old, 12 year old, 14 year old. We just, life happens to us and we grow taller and bigger <laughs> and we age. But I think we should really hold on to that, that child within us all. And the wonderful things, the wonderful thing about children's books is that um, the sirens are really annoying, aren't they? Is that um, they're, they're so powerful, you know, they have really um, wonderful messages in them that help us and shape us in life, you know, there's always a moral within a children's story. So on the back, it says, Catherine Rundell is one of the best writers of children's books of her generation. Here she argues why you shouldn't turn your back on children's books as an adult and how reading them can vastly enlarge your world. So, yeah, and it's not a massive book. And this was quite cheap. This was six pound. Um, I don't even know if the pages are numbered. They're not. So I can't tell you. Oh, I can. Although it stops at a certain point there's something called flight at the back that might be telling you about a, a children's book acknowledgements so it says 62 pages but then there's another good chunk of pages after that um and there's not a lot of text on on each page as you can see but so i'm gonna have a read of that later um along with me together i'm seeing some tags so what a lovely welcome you guys are awesome i really like it it was suggested to me based off previous purchases. It made me smile. Yeah. Okay, Scott, have a good shift at work. I recently read The Magic Faraway Tree again. Gypsy Heart, they were my favourite books as a kid. I mean, Enid Blyton now, when you look back, was pretty problematic. But as a child in the late 70s, early 80s, the faraway tree, the folk of the faraway tree, the enchanted ward, that series of books, uh, I devoured them. And I wanted I wanted my own tree to climb that would take me to a different land at the top of the tree, like the land of Topsy Turvy, and oh, I loved it. And all the characters, Moonface and Tinkerbell and Dame Washalot, so wonderful, wonderful books. I bought them for my nieces as well when my sister had kids. So I wanted them to have the same childhood experience as I had. And hopefully learn a few things along the way. Hopefully, Jen. Dar even read it to his kids. I did, didn't I? Luna Moon hair. I read it to you. Don't think I've read the whole book. I think what I was going to do was every sabbatical I was going to read from that i don't think i did <laughs> chris says i'm definitely still a big kid maturity wise anyway yeah but why grow up we don't have to do we i think it's i think it's sad when we let go of our inner child you know we should embrace it a lot more and just allow ourselves to have more fun life can be pretty serious as it is without without being able to have fun or feeling that we've got to be mature all the time Stephanie's rereading Charlotte's Web. We read that at school. Um, such a sad book. I have really, I have this really beautiful edition with gold gilding on the back pages. Oh, is it by Folio Society? I bought my favourite book, which is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Um, I got a Folio Society book of that. I was going to get The Wizard of Oz. I mean, they're very expensive, but they are beautiful. Um... Hi, Pomona. And hi, Renee. Nice to see you. Uh, just catching up to see if there's any more comments before I go on to decks. I'm holding you to that every Sabbath. Well, we've just had 
Beltane, aren't we? Um, I'll read for you at any time, Al. Just been to Watkins Bar, oh you lucky thing, Richie, and Atlantis Bookshop in London. A wonderful shopping trip on train home, catching CC and C. Oh, Richie, that sounds amazing. I'll put my little trip to Watkins to <laughs> pay us in significance. I've never been to, no, Atlantis I have. I have been to Atlantis. Sandra took me to Atlantis. What's the other one I've not been to? Atlantis is the one that Al Alistair Crowley had, wasn't it? We used to have a chair in the corner. I've never been to Treadwells, but there was another one that wasn't far from Watkins that Kelly Bear told me about. I actually got it at Barnes & Noble in the States. Gold-sided edges. But I've been beautiful, but I've seen the beautiful books from Folio Society. Yeah. Oh, is Richard here? I can see Al going, Richard! Where's Richard? I can't see Richard. Richard, show thyself. Uh, Corvin says, I love Folio Society. Their books are so lush. They are. And I did want to get a Folio Society book. So I thought, well, I may as well start with my favourite ever book. Um, I love Lunar Moon Hair. Lunar Moon Hair is a beautiful book. Uh, Treadwells was one, yes. But there was another one. Um, oh, Richie. Yes, it's me, Longman Tarot. Oh, so you've got a different account, Richie Osborne. Wow. I didn't even realise. Well, hello, Richard, and welcome. Um, now you guys have given got me singing the nether ending story theme so song i watched that a couple of months ago on tv i went to my parents and it was on on a sunday afternoon smp sorry I, I, a news flash just came up <laughs> looks like smp has won in scotland um in canada it's coles indigo and chapters we used to have w8 smiths but not so much anymore we've got two big w8 smiths and one is shutting down today it's the last day today i went in there yesterday and got pens and everything. they're selling everything off at 75 percent off so i've got quite a lot of stationery yesterday but today's the last day and then the one down below me is still open that won't close because it's got a post office in there but um never end a story love it yeah it's dated now but it's still still got that certain naive charm Okay, so also at the till, I picked up these. I don't know if you've seen these. You got this. Um, and I just thought I'd not, if you know me and know my channel, you know um, tarot is my thing. I do enjoy a nice oracle deck, but I don't tend to go for affirmation type decks. They're just, they're just not me. But I think I was in a place on Monday, you know, where, as I said, it was a wet, dreary bank holiday. And I was just in a place and I saw this and I looked at the back and I saw some of the quotes and they are, there's a hundred cards and it's inspirational quotes to empower you for the day ahead. So I thought, well, do you know what? What I might just do is just, I've not opened anything yet, I'll wait until today, is I might just, you know, have some next to my bed on my bedside cabinet or something. And when I wake up in the morning, I might pull a card and just see, um, you know, take the quote and have it as a bit of a personal mantra for the day. See how we go. I don't, as I said, I don't normally get on with um, affirmations, but this as you can see, it was only four ninety nine. So I thought, well, for fiver, a hundred cards. The last coals. <laughs> I 
I was looking, I thought, why is Jackie saying uh, a laughy face to Kat? So I look back, tarot is my thing, he says. In other news, it's wet out. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what, I'm, what, what I meant was, it's not like me to pick up affirmation decks. But that is funny, that did make me chuckle. Um, I am very picky with affirmation decks. There are some I have, but lots are too cheesy. Yes, Corbin, and that's what I'm worried about. But I thought, well, if they're empowering, I mean, the paper thing, <laughs> but there, there is a hundred cards, but, and they're only a fiver, but that is paper thin. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Make every day a masterpiece. Oh, although I like this. Without a vision for your future, you will always return to your past. Oh, I like that. Hi, Billy. I like that. Without a vision for your future, you will always return to your past. I'm putting that to one side. Yeah, things like that, you are amazing. Not that I don't think, as individuals, we are amazing. We are, you know scientifically amazing um but i don't like cars that say you are wonderful you are amazing because i prefer ones like that do what you can with what you have and where you are simon loving tarot no really all right, you lot. Oh, I like that. To lead the orchestra, you must turn your back on the crowd. <gasps> to lead the orchestra, you must turn your back on the crowd. If you don't get on with them, you could always pop a card into packages. Did it ball? You're, we're on the same level. That's exactly what I thought. Because I used to do that. I had some little cards that I got from the Brahma Kumaris. And years ago, if you received a package from me, you would have always got one of these little cards in there. And I thought about that. If it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Yeah, some are cheesy, but some are really little gems. If you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. You could pick out the ones you don't. Yes, I think that's what I'll do. I'll go through, but then I don't really want to. <laughs> well, I could send cheesy ones to people. It'd be like, mm, all right. Actually, I can. Wounds can become wisdom with the right perspective. Be there for others, but never leave yourself behind. Anyway, I'm not going to read them all because I've only got through that many and it's done all that. So, yeah, I just thought, well, I'll give it a go. I might pull one each day and see. Because I do like quotes. And in my journal, I've got a section for quotes. So when I hear a good quote, I write them. I write them in, and I, I'd like I like those two in particular. This, there are some little gems in there. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So I can't get them back in. <laughs> the box is isn't that great, but a fiver, guys, five pound little what do they call them impulse sales um in my retail days there used to be lots of little tricks that you would do do you know for example when you go into a supermarket the light in above the fruit and veg has a special bulb which is different to the light different to the bulbs all across the store to make the fruit and veg look more appealing than what it actually is little tip little uh secret that i've given there of the retail world when you walk into a motorway service station shop the fridge is always at the furthest point 
that's because it's the top seller and they want to drag you through the whole of the shop passing by all the promotional ends to get that drink that you need oh there's lots there's lots i could tell you after 16 years in retail i like the brands i like the brand sunny present present i have their empowering questions oh i've not heard of that brand so the brand is called sunny present I like the brand Sunny Present. I have their empowering questions and less anxiety affirmation cards. Oh, that's good to know. I am amazing. You can send that one here. <laughs> Believe it. You are amazing. Uh, it's an Animal Crossing phrase. I've never even played games. No, I'm not much of a gamer. Okay, so I've got one affirmation deck, one oracle type deck, and a tarot deck. So the oracle deck that I got is a new deck called The Magic Art of Fortune Telling, and it's 52 oracle cards. And it kind of reminds me a bit of, you know, um, Flavia Kate Peters and Barbara Mickle John Free do decks, and they've got one out called Divination of the Ancients which came out i think in 20 2016 um and it's it's of a similar vein as in it talks about different types of fortune telling or divination but look at that for box and the cards are like this as well sunny present decks are on amazon oops are you still on smiley box shop ban no, I'm not on a box, smiley box shop ban. Um, yeah, so this is by Elsie Wild. Oh, these are huge cards. So really large cards, about the same size as the box, more or less. Um, lots of packet padding inside there. That could have been half as thick, really, because that is... Some major padding. Um, hi, Emily. Um, oh, now it led you to believe that the cards were the same sort of shiny finish, like like the box, but they're not. Um, you get cards instead of a book, so you've got a symbol glossary there which talks about all the different things, like the anchor is good looking business, the angel is good news that brings happiness, apple is knowledge, etc. cow is prosperity. So you've got a, a guide there. Then you've got a card that has interpreting answers. No, you haven't. No, 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 ignore me. I see what they've done. Mm. This is a strange way. So the cards don't have backs. Um, what they have is you've got your card, and then on the back is the interpretation. So when I said there's a card for interpreting answers, that's because it is the dowsing card. So you've got dowsing here, and underneath it says interpreting answers. So then it gives you the write up on the back. Dowsing is a little different from other forms of fortune telling because it's based on a straightforward yes or no answers. But you can also program your pendulum, witching stick, or and or dowsing rods to respond to you in a certain way. For example, yes can be read as moving in the front to back motion or circling clockwise, whilst no can be read as moving side to side or circling anti-clockwise. We had this discussion in Becca's channel last night. Um, can you hear the wind getting up? Um, because Becca received a dowsing pendulum from Schiffer. And I always do mine where it's like the, the head movements. So, you know, if you're saying yes to somebody, you, you nod your head. So for me, a dowsing crystal moves north to south for yes. And if you're saying no, you shake your head. So for me, a dancing crystal that moves from left to right, etc., is a no response. For me, a circular movement 
was a unsure or rephrase the question type of thing. Okay, these are different to what I was expecting because there is scrying. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't watch walkthroughs, when you just buy on impulse. Scrying. What is scrying? Scrying. The history of scrying. Scrying. Crystal ball scrying. Scrying. <laughs> Black mirror scrying. Scrying. Water scrying. Smoke scrying. Wax scrying. Fire scrying. Deciphering symbols for scrying. And colours and their meanings for scrying. So there's a lot of cards on scrying. Uh, but then we have the same for palmistry. 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 Yeah, I'm not too fussed by these, to be honest. No, scrying. <laughs> wow, there's lots. Oh, but then we've got tea leaf reading, which takes up about, God, there's loads. Clairvoyance takes up loads. And then dowsing. So there's like five subjects, I think. <laughs> Let's have a look, actually. Clairvoyance is one. Somebody count with me. Oh, the dowsing is two. Tea leaves is three. Palmistry is four. Scrying is five. So basically, there's five. <laughs> But there's about 10 cards for each, which makes about 50 cards. Ever thought of scrying, Simon? <laughs> I've got a black mirror. I've got a crystal ball. Maybe she just fill me sink up and have a go with water. And I'm not belittling it. But, yeah, it's kind of not what it purports to be. But when you stood in a shop and you've never seen it before, and you get a lovely, kind of a bit of a magpie, a lovely box like this, and you thought... Oh, Magic Art of Fortune Talent, 52 Oracle cards. How fab. And then you realise there's no book because half of that box has, has got padding in it. You can put your finger through this hole and you lose half your finger. That's how deep it is. But anyway, you live and learn. Will I use them? Probably not. Probably won't use them. But... That's okay. So far, three books I'll read, one deck I'll have a go at, one I won't use. And then the other one is, I've never seen this before. It's a tarot deck. What are those? <laughs> We've got some, am I betraying? No. We've got somebody who every time he sees you, stands on your foot and goes, what are those? <laughs> and point, points to your shoes. <laughs> Oh, it just reminded me. That's why we have you. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the hit. I'll take one for the team. That's weird about a book. Yeah, it's because they're on the backs, but quality isn't what I was expecting. Um, we've all gotten decks. I'm being sorry. That deck looks like Halloween prop. <laughs> So, Tarot for All Ages. Now, I've never heard of this, never seen it, never seen a walkthrough or anything. Um, and I thought, wow, because I've had a lot of decks recently, like Dexterny, um, the Smith Tiny, which is for younger people. I've always loved Delos, Tarot, and things like that. Um, but having a Tarot that's for all ages, it looks it looked really simple and quite quite lovely with the images. Again, I've not seen a walkthrough, so I could be sorely disappointed. But I was talking to Chris from Elemental Cartomancy, and I mentioned, I said, oh, I've picked up a few bits. Um, and I mentioned this deck, and he says, oh, yeah, I've, I've seen that deck. And um, 
I think he said you sent it to is it Diane for her son um, because it's a deck for all ages, but it looked like a nice chunky box. The images look quite cute. Um, I think Ikele Sunflower was posting about that the other day. Oh, okay. So B's showing it. Explore the world of tarot. If you don't already think of yourself as an expert storyteller, you soon will. With simple card summaries, reimagined characters, and child-friendly illustrations, the 78 cards and guidebook will teach beginners of all ages how to use tarot cards for self-awareness and reflection. Share the adventure with your friends and family as you discover, heal, and create stories together. Love the box. Yeah, the box is really nice. It's a nice sturdy one. It's got a lovely kind of um, lilac colour on the inside. It's got a little book. Tarot for all ages. It doesn't have a lot. It's got um, a colour thumbnail image with a a bit of a write-up it's got some keywords um so for example oh that was the minors you get you do get a page for the majors so for the emperor it's got keywords and then um oh, a bit about numerology as well the numeral four refers to creation stability and decisions so so yeah it's quite quite a nice little book hint hint here we go for L. What do you mean? Just found them on Amazon, says D. So that's the packaging. It's got a nice uh, powdery baby pink on the inside. The colour scheme is quite nice, quite soft and gentle. I'm going to have to get that one for my daughter. I've already started collecting for her. Yeah. So it's great, because, but I like the fact that it says for all ages. Again, going back to what I was saying at the beginning about children's books, how they shouldn't just be seen as books for children. So I've took the band off, paper band. And yeah, this is a chunky deck. So the cardstock is pretty good. They are matte, they're borderless. How much did I pay? I don't think I paid a lot. Um, 17, no, sorry, 14.99. UK 14.99 so 15 pound not bad at all really hello Tanji how are you there's something to be said about a good box many talk boxes are awful and don't last yes I agree Ugh, talk boxes so these are the backs so a nice design Oh, they're really quite sweet. It kind of reminds me of Delos in a little, in a way. I love that. Look how big that flower is, though. It's holding the stem and it's flailing behind, almost like a balloon or a kite or something. But the symbols is all there the sun in the sky, the fall at the edge of the cliff, the little white dog. They feel nice. I mean, it's, it's chunky, so I'm not sure people with little hands. You know, especially if this is for young people of younger years. Here's our magician. Interestingly, some of the titles have changed. Um, your daughter is luckily telling you. Um, so we have Dreamer here instead of our High Priestess. Dreamer, which is interesting. But I love this image of the High Priestess. Look at that with the the moon and the stars and everything in her dress. I really like that. The Empress is sweet. Look at that for a bonnet. Very earth centered, nature based. We have an Emperor. They remind me of Dixit cards. I see where you're coming from, Ellie. Cat lights it. We have Mentor rather than the Hierophant. But you know what? Hierophant would be quite something for children, wouldn't it? To, to explain or... 
so we have a mentor here. Look at the two keys. So instead of our lovers, we have unity. And they're intertwined with this glorious stripy hairdo. The chariot has been pulled by these seahorses. Strength is a little bit disturbing. Is that a, a griffin? But look at how her hair becomes the lemniscate. I think that's what you call a griffin. Mentor, not minotaur. Did I say minotaur? Um, put comments up. The hermit, I love, love the hermit card. I think you might need to turn that light off because it's saturating the, the colors. No, I did. Okay. Got the wheel. That's a cute hermit. It is a cute hermit. Justice. The whole marked thing, you know, with the, the heart being measured against the feather. So instead of the hanged man, we have surrender. Oh, look how they're being, those, his feet being carried by doves by the looks of it. That's an interesting perspective. Definitely going on my wish list. June says, great hermit card. I'd love a print of that. Oh, rebirth is wonderful. Look at that. You see this little shell at the bottom here where my finger is? rebirth rather than death beautiful then we have balance i love that the underskirt under the skirt is the night with the stars and the moon and then the sun and everything on the top and that balance on the tightrope as well as juggling i love it Instead of the devil, we have greed. Yes, Ellie, I was saying I could see where you were coming from with the Dixit card reference. Hi, Angie. Nice to see you. We have the tower. I love the moon. I'm not quite sure about the star. I mean, it's it's all there, isn't it? One vessel pouring in. The other one, you know, is receiving the water from above. But the moon I really like. We've got everything there. Such cool symbolism here with this one. Yeah. It is. And the artwork is really nice. It's simple, but it's it's effective. Look at that. So for judgment, it's idea, but it's that noise in our heads, isn't it? Because we are our own worst critic, really. We judge ourselves probably more harshly than others would judge us. the world it will be interesting to see how it reads I have found the cartoony illustrative decks pack a mighty punch yeah definitely so I thought this was going to be quite pippish with it being you know not an expensive deck although the quality is really nice 
but it, it's not. It is illustrated as well. It's kind of semi pip, semi illustrated. Oh, is Wendy Pauly? I can see Chris saying get better soon. Thank you for being here today, Simon and everyone. I was feeling a bit off. This is lovely. Oh, Wendy, I'm glad that we've been able to help in some way. So we have our pentacles here. I'll go a little bit quicker through these because Jen's going to be joining me in 10 minutes. But I really like the artwork. Cardstock, as I said, is lovely. They are matte, borderless. And I've not seen, I know somebody said B has done a walkthrough, but I've not seen any... Uh, authors at all oh, wasn't even aware of this deck and i don't get to go to a lot of deanne's lives now because we've been back at work um i do get to go to her sunday ones but that's a study group for the um archetypes deck so for our courts the courts have been uh, modernized and the titles have all changed Jen's joining in 10 minutes. What's this? Jen Jen. <laughs> Jen Jen is joining me to give an update on Tarathon. So, yeah, really exciting. So, yes, stand by. She'll be joining me soon. So, we have an apprentice for the page. The apprentice. I like that. The apprentice of pentacles. Then we have the steward. Guardian for our queen, and then the sage. I like that, the guardian and the sage, and the apprentice and steward. Yeah, I like that. Have you sent, have sent you an email, read the sunny present decks? Thank you, in case they're of interest. Thank you, Billy, appreciate that. So Simon's just the warm up there at then. How very we have our ones oh we have a labyrinth here a little nod to paganism there Oh, this reminds me of Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your long hair. Another children's story, you see. That's interesting, isn't it? I like the, the kind of, even though the artwork is very different to what you'd be familiar with, with like RWS, I love the little nuances and little nods to it, you know. The A is about that swift action. We often see them flying through the sky, but here we've got a little bird to represent that. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's he's so uh, uh, over kind of uh, bared by it. He's down on all fours. We have our apprentice, steward, the guardian, and the sage. And they've tried to really represent diversity as well within this deck, which is which is good. They're going to reimagine the tarot and bring it up to date. We have swords. Wow, look at that. What are those things called? Unicycle, is it? Sitting riding this unicycle. He's got his sword crossed. Oh, it reminds me. I don't know if Kristen's still here, but I got a picture of Kristen last night trying to um, <laughs> reenact the two of swords. Here's the three. Five. 
I love it. I love the artwork. Look at the faces. I thought I saw something in the clouds there, but I'm seeing things. Six. Seven. Look at that for the Nine of Swords. Oh, how powerful. That's like, you know, the, I mean, it's the Nightmare card, isn't it? But it's like that where the room gets smaller. We've all had those dreams, haven't we? How you feel really sort of closed in. And it's because of the mind, what's happening in the mind. Hi, Gypsy in the Forest. And we have our apprentice. I love how the stewards are all running up the sides of these castle steps in every one. And then our final suit is the cups. Oh. Cat and a bird, look at that. Serpent there is making the most of the two that's upturned. There's our seven. These are so unusual, but I really like them. There's something very appealing about them. Look at the fox. So they're kind of semi-pippish, aren't they? <laughs> you know the, uh, the famous pager cups with the little fish in uh, inside? Not so little. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> the steward. The Guardian and the Sage. So they're pretty cool. I'm glad I picked them up. So, out of all my acquisitions from my bank holiday, Jen, if you're if you're ready, you're welcome to click the link and come and join me. Um, yeah, out of all my bank holiday acquisitions, I'm really pleased with the books that I got. The books seem really um interesting so for those of you who came a little bit late um the books that i'm talking about is the original um key to the tarot the 2020 version which has the forward by liz green um so that one and then uh catherine rondell's why you should read children's books even though you are so old and wise and then this one, which is just a gorgeous, gorgeous book, is Together. And that is by Luke Adam Hawker, talking about when dark clouds come, how when we pull together, um, we can get through those storms. So, and it's in the same vein as the, the mole, the, the boy, the mole, the horse and the fox. And I know I'm probably saying that uh, the wrong way around. Okay, so who wants to hear about Tarathon 2021? Being as we're now in May, and May is our month for Tarathon. So as a lot of you will know, um, I've had so much going on this year that I couldn't give the attention to Tarathon that I hoped to give. Um, and it wouldn't have been unfair on everybody who had already said that they were taking part. And I, I was really having sort of, and I spoke to a few people about it, and I was really having this sort of kind of 
dilemma as to whether to a cancel Tarathon or push it back to later in the year. Um, but what I decided on was to ask a really good friend of mine who I know had and has the most exceptional organizational skills to see if she would take over for me for this year. And she didn't even hesitate. She was straight there offering that support. So I'm going to bring in my lovely friend, Jen, and she's going to tell you all about this year's Tarathon. Hello, lovely. Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you? Good. Let me turn my volume down. I'm on my laptop today. I've got the simple setup going. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully I'm not too echoey. Yes. Uh, and good morning. I mean, I know it's, I, I was trying to get hold of you just before going live. I was like, Jen, Jen, are you there? I was thinking, oh, Jen's awake because I didn't want to just spring it on you. I wanted to give you time to kind of prep. So good morning. I hope you've got a coffee now, I see. I do. Yep. So that's really helping. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. So shall we talk about Tarathon? Yes, let's. Okay. All right, let's do it. So first things first, um, probably the biggest change to Tarothon. So it's going to be the Tarothon that you all know and love that Simon has so successfully ran over the last three years. This is our fourth year, right? I missed 2018, but boy, I love going back and seeing the clips from it. <laughs> Um, so the main difference is going to be, it's going to start on my channel, Jen's Balanced Tarot. So that's where we're going to kick it off, but we're still doing it in UK time. So it's still starting at 10 AM British time, 2 AM for me. So this is going to be a fun new challenge. Usually my time slot is like in the middle of the day. I'm like, Oh, I gotta be awake or maybe not. <laughs> we'll see how that goes, <laughs> but we have an amazing lineup this year. We have some faces that you've seen before participate in Tarothon, but I think now at least half of our participants are all brand new. Um, we had a lot of fun this year creating a bit of a promo video that I have put up on my channel. And we've also, I don't think we've linked the latest version in the Hermit's Cave. We, we might want to do that as post the updated lineup. We did have some changes from when we announced almost two weeks ago. Um, and so we have, a, we have two channel replacements. So we put out a new promo video that's on my channel now that you can see, and we'll share that out. Um, but just so everybody knows, you want to mark your calendars for Sunday, May 30th, starting at 10 a.m. UK time, which is 2 a.m. Pacific time, 4 a.m. Central, 5 Eastern, and some time the next day <laughs> or later that day in Australia. I always have a little bit of trouble with those time zones. And we run for 24 hours until Monday the 31st, which thankfully is a bank slash holiday in both the UK and the US this year. So a lot of us are going to be able to really power through and stay up that full 24 hours if we want to. So let me, let me, should we just give them the lineup? Should we just? Yes. Yes. Let's All right. Just, so everybody's saying in the chat <laughs> as well that they're really excited for it. It's a great lineup this year, which, which it absolutely is. And, and as you said, Jen, it's, you know, there are people who have been there previously. There are people who are returning that perhaps I'm thinking of like Brian Cormac Carr, who perhaps, you know, couldn't do last year that were coming back, but it's also, and what we really wanted to do, and even months ago when we first put something out out there, was we wanted to bring fresh blood, you know, new channels as well, and give everybody an opportunity. And it's great because some people have genuinely said, haven't they, this year, I'll sit this year out, you know, um, and allow somebody else to, to have a slot. And I think that's really lovely as well, that people have, um, you know, consciously thought about, perhaps stepping back to allow other people, but it's a fantastic lineup and I'm so excited about it. So yeah, hearing a bit about who's joining us and what they might be talking about would, would be great. Can I put you on full screen as well? Oh, sure. For this. So I'm gonna give you the full lineup and if you go check out the promo video in the description box, there will be a link to every participant um, every participant's channel so you can subscribe in advance and make sure you get those alerts as each new channel is going live 
during Tarathon. So I got my handy dandy iPad here and I'm gonna tell you the full lineup and their titles. So we're gonna start with me, Jen's Balanced Tarot, and I'm gonna be talking about tapping into collective intention using the tarot. Then we have Kasha over at Tarot Map talking about devotion and divination. We have Becca Talks and Tarot uh, giving us a sneak peek at some tarot treasures. Then we have Chris, Elemental Cardamancy, who I know is here in the chat, talking about comparing the big three. So the big three tarot systems, RWS, Thoth, and Tarot de Marseille. Chris, correct me if I said that wrong. Then we have Brian Cormac Carr talking about tarot and your hero's journey. We have a Moon Baby, so Brant over at Moon Baby, whose tarot deck was successfully recently funded on Kickstarter, talking about deck creation concept to Kickstarter. So he's going to share his experience with us. Then we have Anna over at Astral Lady Tarot talking about making one tarot system. So this is gonna be kind of, I think a complimentary segment to what Chris is doing, where he's showing the big three and then she's gonna show you how to put them together, which is very intriguing to me. We have our Elaine at Tarot Tats and Tea with Elaine talking about the media's portrayal of tarot. That should be really interesting. Then we have a really special collaboration that's happening with Julia Peekaboo Rose, who's going to have guests Sarah from Sunset Bow Tarot and Heather Carter. And they're going to be doing a segment called Three Girls, One Deck. Deck. <laughs> just, just to clarify. And then we have Mitchell Osborne talking about tarot for transformation, not to be confused with the workbook that's out there. We have Amber at Lam Lavender Moon covering tarot and the Hebrew alphabet. We have Arcane Panda, so Panda Bennett from Arcane Panda talking about tarot in the details. So getting a look at those tiny little details that we see in the tarot. Those of you who like to attend Tarot Playdate kind of know what that is. Thank you for shaking, Vaughn. That's my dog. We have Renee, the tarot magician, talking about your spiritual gifts in tarot. We have Jess, Stella Rain Dancer, uh, covering pathworking with the tarot. I mean, are you guys excited yet? You're not bored by me listing this, <laughs> these titles, I hope, because I'm so excited. We have Alex at Lazy Genius Tarot and Bazaar talking about tarot and the esoteric. We have Tara, Tara at Kittens, Weights, and Tarot talking about tarot and herbs or herbs if you're in the UK. Jonathan Daly will be covering healing ancient wounds with tarot. Sadhana at Integrative Healing with Sadhana will be bringing back the significator. Wolf Meets Witch, a collab channel we haven't seen in a while, <laughs> um, will be crafting correspondences. So if you remember, they made their their debut at Tarothon last year. So they're coming back for an encore for us. We have our Corbin at Tail Raven Tarot covering tarot beyond the binary. That's a segment I am very interested in hearing. I'm interested in all of them. Don't get me wrong. Hi, Vaughn. <laughs> we have Nina at Shuffle Tarot covering incorporating runes into your practice. And then at the end of all of that, we'll come back to my channel for the wrap up party. All right. Tell me what you're excited about. I really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> all of it. <laughs> It sounds amazing. Hearing you read it out as well, you know, and talk about it just sounds, it sounds epic. It sounds really great. And every year, I'm, it, it's the highlight of the year. It's stressful, as I'm sure you can appreciate now. <laughs> Not that you didn't before, but <laughs> it's stressful to, to get this. This planning always starts around February to get us to the point where we're at ready for May. And there's always, every year, some last minute changes and things, which really tests you but it's worth it and when tarathon draws to an end at 10 a.m uk time on the monday there's always a really there's just such a buzz you know there's a buzz leading up to it there's a great atmosphere during it and the people who come along and support as well um and you know nobody has to stay away for the full 24 hours but there are some people who are on a mission to stay away and we support each other you know everybody's in the chat how you doing you know and some people are up it's great in the uk i get up at 8 a.m or whatever and i don't have to go live until 10. you're starting off at like two in the morning <laughs> so your 24 hours you know can be more arduous than other people's so 
so yeah but it's it's always such a highlight of the the year within the tarot sphere isn't it Yes. And I would like to give a couple of special shout outs, if you don't mind, because we always have had in the past, we've, we've sometimes been surprised by some last minute changes, people who, for whatever reason, aren't able to participate when they thought we have a we have a few volunteers. And I just want to give them a special shout out, the people who have volunteered to be backup spots um, if, if, a, if a spot comes open. And we really want to keep the lineup that we have. But I just really want to send out a special, special thank you to the people who are willing to do that. And those people include Deanne at Blue Crescent Tarot. We have Richard, who was here in the chat under a different channel name, but Richard at Longman Tarot. Jenna at Jennifer Ball's Witch House. And Tangie, if she's still in the chat, I know she's, oh, there she is. She's offered to be a backup as well. And I haven't reached out to you yet about that, Tangie, but I will. And I just want to say thank you because that really helps take so much of the stress off. And these are also channels that you might want to check out. So Tangie at Roman Biscotti, by the way. Yeah. Cool. yeah, brilliant. And every <laughs> year, you know, there are, there, are, there are always opportunities for people who are on, re on reserve lists because things happen. You know, as much as we plan, you know, sometimes life gets in the way and other things happen. Hence, you know, me not being able to be as involved this year as I would have liked to have been. But thank you, Jen. I really appreciate um, you as a friend, but also just for stepping in so that this year's Tarathon could go ahead. And I'm sure everybody agrees with me. You, you know, you've just, you really have been that glue that's held everything together. But you are the right person. You are the ones with the skills and, you know, the, with the Google feeds and the spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to be somebody who's really organized. <laughs> I mean, I was a PA for seven years, so I learned my organizational skills back then. But you take it to a whole new level. <laughs> and, you know, we've already talked this, you know, if, if Tarathon continues, you will have such an active part in that anyway, because, you know, it's, it's as much your Tarathon now as mine and everybody else's so yeah so unless there's any questions from anybody about tarathon but i think jen has pretty much covered everything then um yeah then what what can i say i'm yeah. excited everybody's excited and um, we'll see you all on jen jen's channel on the 30 30th 30th 30th. <laughs> or we're all going to be late. But thanks for letting me help out so Tarathon can continue. It really, um, it's been a lot of fun. And everybody has been, everybody has been so great to work with. They, they've all made it so easy. So that makes a huge difference when we all come together and do it like that. Yeah, lovely. All right. Thank you for joining me, Jen. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye. All right. So isn't that that just sounds so great i can't can't wait for tarathon and it's going to be if i can be there you know because that's again that's one of the reasons why i had to step back because i just don't know what's going to happen but things are looking good so if i can be there it'll be lovely this year as well just to be with you guys you know supporting cheering on encouraging and just being there in the in the chat so yeah i'm looking forward to it all right shall i pull a card and wrap up because it's half past five already so i've been on for an hour and a half just thinking what deck to use why don't i use my modified crystal visions um and we'll have a we'll have a card so exciting it is exciting all right something for us to focus on then for the week ahead uh, Oh, we have the Eight of Pentacles. What a gorgeous card, the Eight of Pentacles. So I guess for me, it's about the energy and the essence of the Eight of Pentacles is learning how to, to shut out the noise, you know, the noise that can get in the way or the external influences or things that can derail us and stop us from achieving what it is that we're working hard to do 
because you know the eight of pentacles for me is about committing to something committing to something and giving it your entire focus and if we allow those external noises those kind of external influences that can derail us that can um, stop us from focusing on achieving our goals then all that hard work that we've we've already put in because remember by the time we get to the eight of pentacles those skills are already developing it's about um you know realizing that the hard work that we are putting in will pay off sometimes it feels that it's endless you know that hard work that attention and you know we might want to just rush out we get abandoned and have fun and party and everything else but nothing happens overnight and that's the reason why it feels so endless is because this that is taking our focus you know what it is that we're wanting to achieve what it is that we're wanting to perfect that hard work and dedication is our all at the moment so whilst things might not seem clear now as in uh, will this end will i get to where i'm going it will you know the reason why we can't see it is because we're so close and we're so focused but just know that it's time now to shut out the chatter anything that's there that could possibly derail you keep on keeping on keep focused and remember you know we don't even have to focus too much on the end goal focus on what we're doing at the moment because that at that end goal will come okay all right everybody thank you for being with me today for cup of ketchup and cards it's been a lovely hour and a half thank you for jen again for joining me today um and talking about tarathon um thank you to everybody in the chat thank you to the mods and i'll be back at some point in the week i am sure um but until then as always go in peace namaste and blessed be